Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm delighted to be joined by Raw Natty Nate on socials. <laughs> and today we're going to talk about his amazing journey with raw foods and just, yeah, just dive into Nate's story because just from what I've um, seen on the internet, Nate's such a cool guy, chill guy, but he's got a powerful story and a powerful message as well. And he's really given back to the people. So um, yeah, without further ado, Nate, how did you get into like the raw foods? And yeah, like what, yeah, what was your reason why? Excellent, Dylan. Hey, well, first and foremost, man, thanks for having me on. I'm really glad to be here and I'm glad that you reached out and we're connecting here. This is uh, powerful work that you're doing, getting out, you know, other people's stories and messages to help other people really kind of make that connection. Um, yeah, so to get into my story, uh, as far as like how I became someone who eats raw food and raw food only is... Um, I, I got really sick in 2011. It was over the holidays, 2011 to 2012. And just laying in bed, it was like a really bad flu. One of those ones that has you down for like a good couple weeks, right? So I, I'm fishing around on the internet and I'm trying to find, you know, just whatever, something to help me become a bit healthier. Um, and I came across like fully raw Christina, you know, David avocado wolf, uh, durian writer, um, Dan, the man, uh, you know, the life regenerator, all these raw foodies. And then I heard about the Woodstock fruit festival and saw that all these people were at the Woodstock fruit festival. And then I watched this documentary fat, sick and nearly dead and was like, man, all this, just, these guys are vibrant. And this, you know, this, this sounds good. This looks good. Maybe I should get a juicer and start juicing. So I got a juicer and started to juice. And I think that I did probably like, I'm not sure if it was every single day for a month, but it was close to a month worth of juicing. And I wasn't eating any other kinds of uh, cooked foods at the time. I was just like, I'm just going to drink this juice, just like the guy Joe Cross did in Fat Sick and Nearly Dead. And I was feeling amazing, man. Like I was feeling so good, but I wasn't doing a lot of um, greens because the juicer that I had, it was a Jack LaLanne juicer, which shout out to Jack LaLanne. You know, he's passed now, but man, the guy was ahead of his time. So amazing. But the juicer wasn't really that great for doing, uh, you know, like the leafier greens and stuff. So I did a lot of fruit juices. And then, you know, I ended up basically stopping you know, after I don't, it was about a month or something and just kind of went back to what I was normally doing. Um, and my mom, she had, um, in, in 2007, she had kidney cancer and she had her kidney removed and here it comes. It's like, you know, 2013, she has, uh, she went in for a checkup and they, they find out that, that she's got cancer in her other kidney. And, you know, that's a real scary one because, mm what they wanted to do was take out her other kidney and we only have two kidneys and they filter our blood. So if you don't have either kidney, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be on dialysis basically for the rest of your life. And what dialysis is, is you're sitting there and they, you know, hook you up with an IV and they pull out your blood and they put it through a machine and filter it for you. Like the machine is your kidneys. So it's kind of like a life sentence in a lot of ways. So, um, we were just kind of determined like, Hey, let's, let's figure out where we could send you to do this the natural way, like try to keep that kidney. And we came across Gerson and we're like, let's send you to Gerson. Let, you know, they have really great success stories from people let, let, you know, it's worth a shot. So we sent her to Gerson and she follows that protocol really strictly for probably a good 10 months, you know, it's almost a year. And we're talking like seven coffee enemas a day and 13 cold pressed juices a day, which, you know, we had the Norwalk juicer, a really good juicer to where you're getting as, you know, the, the best yield out of, out of your juice. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't really something that appealed to me to do, but I knew that I didn't want cancer and kind of my, my joke, you know, just to kind of make light of the situation. Cause life is pretty intense is like, you know, if we swallow our own saliva for 50 years, we'll probably get cancer. You know, everybody's getting cancer out there. So I just 
was watching what she was doing and I'm like, man, this is intense. This, what a life, you know, she's taking all kinds of different supplements too, like, you know, herbal supplements and such. And she ended up kind of pivoting and found this, this program called, um, she, she read a book called the grape cure and she, she found this protocol. It was called, uh, the master fast system. I want to say it was, and it was this guy, Gino, and basically it was dry fasting, you know, 20 hours a day and just, you know, feeding on grape juice, Concord grape juice wow. with fresh squeezed lemon juice in the grape juice. And then you'd stir it with like a burnt wooden spoon, something to do with the, you know, the, the, the something charge in of the it, wood. the electrical yeah, charge. Yeah. yeah. Cause if you right. use silver, I think it does. Yeah. Something to- so she, she was doing that and she had a great mindset. She was like, I'm already healed. I just have to do the work. And I'm like, man, that's a powerful mindset, mom. Like you're going to, you're going to figure this out. And when you do, I'm going to follow you. Like I, you know, cause you know, looking around in the world, if we, you know, it doesn't take, you know, a, uh, <laughs> you just look around and you see what's going on out there. There is a lot of issues that we're having. And of course, a lot of it has to do with the food that we eat. Right. So after, about, it was probably about a year, another 10 months or so. She gets a call because she went in, got her checkup. She gets a call from the urologist and the, uh, and the radiologist. And, and they were like, what are you doing? Like, we, we don't see the tumor. And so that was, that was it. She basically, that, that tumor just kind of shrunk or, or went away because of this protocol that she was doing still was an intense protocol, not something that I really wanted to do, but I was really grateful that she didn't have kidney cancer anymore. And at that point, you know, I told her I'd listen to her and I I, I said that I would to myself, like I need to do what she's doing because, you know, I don't want to get cancer and cancer runs in, you know, our family and, you know, so many families. And of course this, this really goes down to, you know, what, what it is we're doing on a daily basis, the habits that we have and how we think about ourselves and what we're eating Mm. and sleep and exercise and all these sorts of things kind of play in. Um, so anyways, it, it was about eight months that had gone by and I still wasn't raw vegan and I was vegan. I went vegan in 2000. It was 2012, basically after that juicing, you know, when I got the juicer, I was like, I'm, I'm going to go vegan. Actually, I think I was like, you know, a good four months or so. And then I went back to eating meat. I went back to eating meat, bread and just everything. And um, working at the hospital at the time, you know, working in nursing, working in the cardiac unit, <clears throat> just seeing all Mm. that I was seeing. And then, you know, my mom's going through what she's going through. I'm like, I need to go back to plant-based. And so I just went back to eating plant-based. You know, I'm watching the documentaries, forks over knives, you know, earthlings, um, like, uh, what is it? Uh, what the health, right? So these different documentaries really start to water those seeds that were already planted from years ago. And I, 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 you know, eating plant-based, I was just eating like what we call the transitional foods, you know, the mock meats, mock cheeses and yeah. and these sorts of things and delicious, amazing, but it's still, you know, a lot of that's processed food and it's not really the best for us. Right. So I, I wasn't feeling the greatest, you know, I mean, in the sense of h- how I, I felt like that I should feel. Um, and I, I really feel that that's a lot to do with just eating, really trying to stay eating what I was eating. And I, you know, I didn't drink soda. I didn't really drink alcohol very, you know, much like I had some alcohol here and there, but I wasn't real big into drinking. But then I tapped back into the raw kind of message, right? I I purchased, you know, a couple books and really started to dig into why, why eat raw food. And it just started to make sense. Like, man, this is, this is the way that like, if, if this was a, a, a divine design of some sort, then we would have our food ready to go for us. We, we shouldn't have to. I didn't like the aspect, you know, of killing. Like, we shouldn't have to kill things and, you know, decimate resources on the planet to be able to feed ourselves in a perfect world, the Garden of Eden, let's say. 
So raw food just made sense to me. And so it was, you know, February of, of 2017, I was on a ski lift and I was riding single that day. And so this guy hops on with me and he's asking me what I do. And I'm like, yeah, I work in the hospital, you know, and I've, I've worked with, you know, endocrinology. I was in that department for a while, patients with diabetes, you know, working in pulmonology, like, uh, or pul- pulmonary, you know, people with, with who can't breathe, you know, properly at night, they have to wear a mask, a CPAP or a BiPAP because they're not breathing on their own properly at night, you know, real shallow breath. So they're not oxygenating their blood and they wake up just feeling so tired. And a lot of these individuals, I, you know, I go through their medications and stuff and they're not switching up what they're eating. They just take the medication and, and even the doctors are on the CPAP and on the medications. So it's, it's, kind of a positive in a way because they really know how to work the machine. They really know what, you know, me, uh, medications work, but it was just really interesting. Cause you know, as I'm ingesting all this other information about raw foods, I'm looking around in the industry that I'm working in and I'm just like, man, this is, this is crazy. This is completely like, this is not a system that is wanting to find cures for people essentially like a hospital's kind of like a hotel, you know, they want to keep those beds full. Mm. So I, uh, I'm on the lift with this guy, John, and I told him about my mom. I was like, yeah, my mom reversed her kidney cancer with raw, raw foods. You know, she's, she's doing like really extreme protocols cause she's fighting for her life. You know, she's doing, you know, fasting and, uh, and he's like, yeah, he's like, I reversed my stage four colorectal cancer at the age of 42. And I've been a raw foodie ever since for 44 years. And I'm just like, whoa, like, wow. dude, you're, I'm like, you're 86 years old? Like, what? And we're heading up this lift. It's a black diamond run. I'm snowboarding. He's skiing, right? <clears throat> and it was just so incredible to hear that guy's story. And, you know, we're only on this lift for a short amount of time. And, you know, I was like, yeah, I told my mom I'd listen to her and, like, follow what she's doing. And he's like, well, what do you want to be, Nate? Like, how do you want to feel? And I'm like, I want to feel vibrant and alive. Like, I want to be like you when I'm 86 years old, man. Yeah. And so at the end, we're getting ready to get off the lift. And he, like, lifts up his goggles. And he, like, just pierces right through me, you know, just kind of like in a way. I'm like, God, oh, is this like my future self or something, you know? Like, is this an angel or something? He's And he just, because I didn't see his face the whole time he had his goggles on. It was kind of like a little bit more of a stormy day that day. And he's like, you should listen to your mom, Nate. And I was like, ah, <laughs> oh, man, I got to do this raw vegan thing. So he takes off, gets off the lift, and, you know, he's skiing, so he doesn't have to strap up or anything. I got to, you know, sit, sit down real quick, strap up my boot. And I wanted to catch him to talk to him a bit more, but he was gone. Like, <laughs> it was just nutty. I'm 86, this dude's almost 90 years old. And just ripping. So one of the things that this is a crucial, this is a crucial part of my story and kind of like where I'm going now with, with what I'm doing with business is, you know, as a guy, I ask him, this is before, you know, we get off the lift, obviously I ask him, I'm like, how's the flagpole? And he's like, still full mast. And I'm like, (laughs) son of a, oh man, that's amazing. Because there's so many people, you know, at the time I was, I think I was right about, uh, you know, right about 40. I was going to be 40 that year. And there's so many people that have impotence issues, blood flow issues, right? And uh, when you think about the, the kind of the circuitry or the, the, the plumbing within us, you know, the, the aorta is a, a really big, you know, diameter. And the ones going to our reproductive organs are like a coffee stir stick, right? Like those tiny little straws. So which ones are going to show signs of clogging first? It's going to be the Mm. smaller piping. So asking him that, I was like, I'm doing this, man. I want to be full masked when I'm 86 years old, right? So I get home and binge watch YouTube and trying to figure out like, I need a meal plan. I need something to follow because I don't know what to do and I don't want to do what my mom's doing. I don't want to fast. Like I, you know, I did the juice kind of fast and I understood about water fasting because my mom's 
at this point in time was diving deep into all these things. And mind you, this is eight months after she's, you know, got her prognosis that she's reversed her kidney cancer. And I still had a hard time adopting a full raw vegan diet because I didn't really know what to do. I didn't know what to eat. I didn't know how to make stuff. And so binge watch YouTube that night and came across several people, you know, bless the YouTube creators that are sharing what they're creating. And I found somebody that just really resonated with me. And I loved the way that she was talking. Her name was Lissa from Raw Food Romance. Melissa, her name was, or is. And I just loved her, just her energy. And I loved the, the look of her food and what she was teaching. She showed, she had a video of like the kitchen tools that she used. So I'm like taking a list. I'm like, all right, cool. I need a dehydrator. I need a food processor. I'm like, oh, I need a blender. You know, I need all these things that are going to really help me on this this path of eating raw food it just makes it a lot easier. I mean, essentially all you need is like a cutting board and a knife, right? But you know, there's certain tools that just make things a lot easier. So I, I bought her recipe book. It was a 30 day meal plan and you know, and she had lost like 70 pounds and reversed like cystic, cystic acne and she had inflammation and all kinds of health issues, like really bad health issues she did. And before, you know, going raw. And so I just, I just consumed as many videos as I could of her. And I was like, man, I love this chick. This chick is amazing. So I'm like, I'm going to support her. I'm going to buy her book. I'm just going to follow this recipe plan. So the recipe plan was 30 days, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Every single day was different. So it was essentially 90 recipes. It had the ingredient list. It had the, you know, shopping list for, for each day, or you can combine, you know, well, what I did was just combine several days to like buy food for like, you know, three or four days. Mm -hmm. So I knew what to do and the food looked amazing. And of course, like, you know, everything was dialed in, um, the macros and stuff were all broken down. So I'm like, okay, you know, I'm not going to wither away and die. You know, I'm going to eat this and I'll be fine. So bought her book and the rest is history, man. Like that was February, 2017. And I basically went from processed vegan to raw vegan overnight. Um, didn't have like this gradual kind of, you know, I'm going to eat more raw food, which, you know, I do suggest for people who don't eat a lot of raw food or high fiber foods, like, you know, to start slowly is kind of a nicer way, mm -hmm. but essentially that's my story, man. Like that's what really kind of got me to flip the switch. You know, it was a call. It was a combination of those two things, like watching my mom, meeting that guy, John, you know, researching, working in the coronary, you know, care unit. Like we, we, our unit was directly above the operating room. So people with open heart surgeries would come right up to our unit. We had an elevator right in our unit directly from the operating room. And we would, you know, rehabilitate these patients as you know, best we could. And we'd lose people, of course, you know, and get them out onto the floor. So all of these things kind of combined, I, I just was like, I, I want something different for myself. And of course, you know, now, you know, and for the past several years, like I would, I would love different for other people too. And so when you, t when you back to like thinking of, of the design, mother nature, the food, it just makes perfect sense. Like this is food that is like it cleans us, it cleans us out, it cleans our endothelium, the, the, you know, like you watch, you know, these documentaries with, you know, Colin Campbell and Esselstyn, you know, the, the works that they did. And you're like, man, they're like, we're reversing heart disease. And here I am working, you know, in nursing at, you know, and the, <laughs> that's all the patients are, you know, people come in and they're like, you know, hey, I, I, even one of the patients that came in, he's a, uh, he was a respiratory therapist for us. And I'm like, yo, what are you doing in my bed, man? And he's like, I'm looking at his chart. I'm like, you, this is your, you're in for your 16th stint. Like, what are you doing? Wow. And he's like, Nate, don't even give me the vegan talk. I'm not turning vegan. I love my sausage. You know, some people just don't want to give up yeah. the stuff. Right. So, and for those who don't know what a stent is, a stent is like, let's picture a garden hose. That's your like artery. And it's full of like sand you know, plaque and stuff, right? So water's not going to flow through or blood. So we go in with a balloon to that thick spot where the sand is and blow it up so the, the blood or the water can flow through. It doesn't fix the problem and it doesn't get rid of the plaque. But raw foods, raw, raw living foods, or even just, you know, whole food, plant-based, low to no oil, minimal salt to no salt, you know, 
get just basically getting away from processed foods and just going back to what the earth is growing naturally the from the trees the bushes and the vines right so <clears throat> yeah i mean essentially that's what happened to me man and that's why i went raw just politely jumping in to share that if you want my exact workout routine that took me from 130 pounds after a lot of cleansing and fasting to 156 pounds over the course of about six months now then you can find that top link in the description and that's completely free but anyway enjoy the rest of the conversation peace and love yeah absolutely and you haven't looked back since it's been over seven and a half years now so yeah you must have experienced a lot of benefits and I've seen your before and after photos. So for anyone who doesn't know, can you share like what you experienced like when you uh, first went raw and the benefits? Yeah, man. So, you know, I had seasonal allergies every year, a couple times a year, you know, I'd always have like a roll of toilet paper with me or, or some Kleenex to be blowing my nose. Cause I'm stuffy all the time. And of course, you know, seasons change pollens and these sorts of things can affect us, but I had really bad allergies. Um, and you know, I didn't have like, a lot of really in, intense health issues that I was trying to overcome. And a lot of times that's what people, that's what draws people into figuring out what to do. And, you know, a lot of people coming to the raw, you know, vegan lifestyle and diet is they're searching for something to heal themselves, yeah. right? You know, more naturally. So for me personally, I didn't really have a lot of stuff that were going on. I mean, I was, I was a bit overweight. You know, I had, you know, obviously inflammation, um, you know, from being overweight and eating the, you know, processed foods and, you know, different junk foods. I mean, you know, of course, you know, we did eat, you know, he somewhat like healthier foods. It wasn't like just chips and, you know, boxes of, you know, mac and cheese and whatnot. But yeah, the allergies went away. I did notice that. And then I also noticed that I was able to, you know, I mean, with the allergies going away, I was able to breathe better. Like I had, I, you know, I, I had asthma as a child. And so my, my breathing was a lot less like, um, restricted, right. You know, very possibly, you know, less, you know, less mucus. Cause I'm eating, you know, less mucus forming foods and, um, taste, the taste I was able to, cause I wasn't using salt. Um, and you know, everything has salt in it. Heck you go to like Chipotle. Do you guys have Chipotle over there? Uh, no, but m most people have heard of it. Yeah. Yeah. So Chipotle is like this fast food kind of, uh, you know, Mexican food. You can go in and get a burrito made, you know, right in front of you or, you know, a bowl. But when you go to Chipotle and you get like just lettuce, and say just the pico de gallo fresh salsa, you know, maybe the corn salsa, which the corn salsa isn't technically raw. There's like some, uh, you know, some peppers in there that are, that are cooked and, and guacamole. So lettuce, salsa, right. And guacamole, there's nearly 2,500 milligrams of sodium in wow. that. It's and that's a fresh salad. Intake. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, the average American they say is around, 4,000 milligrams to 4,500 milligrams of sodium a day, right? And this, you know, messes with our whole system in a lot of ways, right? But it's in everything and it's, you know, to help preserve food. And of course they want it to taste good and we kind of get addicted to the salt and, you know, so stuff's not salty. It doesn't taste good, but I was finding that I was able to taste like seasonings and just taste things so much better because they're in their raw state. So these were some of the things that I, I noticed, you know, like I said, I wasn't overcoming some kind of a, you know, life threatening disease or, you know, some sort of, you know, real intense issue. I didn't have any sort of gut dysbiosis issues. It was, it was pretty for me in a lot of ways, it was just looking around and being like, man, I'd really like to preserve myself. I'd like to be like this guy on the lift at 86 years old, still skiing. Like that's a dream of mine to ski with my grandkids, you know, and I just knew that I wasn't going to have that same kind of outcome with my genetic makeup and how I was feeding myself. I had to make the switch, right? So yeah, that's, that's really what I experienced. You know, and of course I shed weight. I think I dropped like a little over 60 pounds. Mm. Um, so, you know, that's, that's a great benefit too. You know, you feel lighter, you feel, you know, clothes fit better. You know, you, you like the reflection that you see back at you in the morning. Right. So yeah, those were, mm. those are some of the benefits. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> it's, it's been the same for me, like, uh, more, more of like a proactive preventative approach. Like yeah, preventative. I think, yeah, I, I guess working in the field that you worked in, 
um you probably saw like you said you saw all of these proper like serious cases and and it kind of uh motivated oh, you to take <laughs> action. let me tell you yeah. we had 16 rooms in our unit and every single room had a lift in stalled mm. in the room and this is this is a machine that hangs from the ceiling to be able to help lift and roll the patient from side to side and we had different things that we would put under the patient to be able to even like pick them up to you know change the bed which these lifts are amazing and we had lifts that would help um kind of like uh, help the, there's a thing called the panis the panis is like the you know the gut you know in between you know the lower belly and and you know the reproductive area there's sometimes people just have so much weight there that you have to be able to have some way to like pick that up to be able wow. to help clean or, ins you know, like uh, insert, you know, catheters and these sorts of things. And just looking like every single room, bro, has a lift. And, you know, most of our patients were, you know, like I, I would say morbidly obese. Right. And it's not like you know, everybody, you know, it, it was like that, but it's just, yeah, these sorts of things really plant the seed where you're like, geez, this is where we're going. I'm going to go yeah. the same way. If I keep doing what everybody else is doing, and you look around out there, you're like, you know, what are you doing? You're like, Oh, that's what you eat. That's what you drink. And you look like that, you know, and of course you don't exercise, uh, you know, and then of course we had patients in, in the hospital too, that were thin, trim, pretty fit looking and still had issues too, you know, so it's not just overweight people, but it was mm. really fascinating to see that just how big we've become because the food that we have access to is so cheap. It's, it's acceptable to, you know, if you're eating a salad, you're going to get a remark, but if you have a big plate full of fish and chips, you know, nobody's saying anything. They're like, Ooh, that looks good. I need to get me some of that. Right. But if you have a big plate of salad, they're like, you know, Man, I should no, I should be eating that when they have the fish and chips, right? So, but the food is just so cheap, man. It's it's all this highly palatable, you know, really just just funk. It's just funk cheap food, and when you think about it, it's 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 a a great way to just sell products, right? And, you know, so that's where whole food is just the better way to go. Whole food, plant based, right? So, yeah. I know exactly what you see out there. You're just like, oh my gosh, what do, what do we want to do? Mm, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I think it's good that you you saw that and you just thought like, hell no, because <laughs> yeah. you know. It's, but it, just say like someone is thinking that they're thinking like, I don't want to end up this way. Um, are there any tips you have for someone wanting to like transition or get started with raw foods? Like, just mm. yeah, man. Tips would be, you know, number one to to love yourself, right? Like treat, if we could all, and you know, I know every single person struggles with this in a way, but treat ourselves like, like we would, you know, our, 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 our own child or like a favorite niece or nephew, somebody that you really mm. love and care about, you, you want the best for them, right? It's really sad to see, you know, families feeding their kids sodas and all this, you know, really just crap food, cheap crap food, but it's so cheap. So you can't necessarily blame them. You know, it's like, you know, you're going to get two pizzas for five bucks or is it $12 for a bag of grapes? And a bag of grapes isn't going to feed your family the same way two pizzas are, right? So it's not set up. So really loving yourself is the first and foremost thing. I feel like if you're really like, man, I really want to self-preserve. That's really what it was. Like for me, it wasn't like, oh, I don't want to have to, you know, I have the vegan lens on now and vegan veganism has nothing to do with diet, but diet plays into veganism. But seeing, you know, what we're doing to the animals and what these workers have to go through, making that connection really helps. I'd say anyone kind of make the connection within themselves. Like, Hmm, maybe I don't want to promote this. Maybe I don't want to mm. vote for this with my dollar. And that would be the first thing, you know, like that I would say is just look around and, and see, you know, what do you want to, what do you want to be a part of? What are you voting for with your dollar? If you're voting for, I want more fresh produce in my store and that's what you're buying, then, you know, the stores are going to want to get more produce because that's what's selling, right? They just, these companies just want to sell products and sell food. So, but, uh, another thing would be to find, to find somebody that you could resonate with that to, to show you and teach you how to prepare food for yourself. Cause this is the thing, like, 
we have teeth, we have salivary glands, right? We salivate, which helps break down the carbohydrate, right? We have a microbiome, a bacteria in our gut to help break down the fibers and all of these things. And it's, it's just like natu- it's the natural food that we should be eating. And, and I say eating because I personally am someone who is really all about that, like building a solid foundation of what to do and how to prepare these foods. You know, and it's so simple. Smoothies and salads, essentially, right? Maybe some banana ice cream. And then, of course, you know, everything, you know, spreads out from there. You can make all kinds of amazing foods that taste delicious, look delicious. But finding some sort of a plan to follow because we're not really, unless you're raised in a household that already does this, You don't really know, you know, we know how to boil potatoes and, you know, cook some pasta or like, you know, fry up some eggs or make some toast. But what do you do when it comes to raw food? A lot of people think of raw food as just like an apple, you know, and carrots and celery. And it's so much more than that, right? I mean, of course, those are delicious items as well. But yeah, so finding something though to follow in the beginning, that's really helps because we, that's the way we learn. You got to follow, you got to follow a plan. You got to have some sort of a plan. I love the idea of, in a way of, you know, say like going on a cleanse, you know, there's like a lot of, you know, craze in the raw food world, you know, is, is, you know, there's, there, there, there's a lot of people big on detoxes and cleanses and juicing and fasting and these sorts of things. And that's all really powerful in a lot of ways to help people kind of recalibrate, you know, if that's what they feel that they need to do. I personally don't feel that that's necessary. I feel that our bodies are really, really smart. We could just kind of transition to eating more high fiber, raw plant foods and the microbiome, the gut bacteria are going to grow to break that down. And we're going to kind of be eliminating some more of the like pathogenic bacteria that are helping break down, you know, like the dead matter, you know, the, the animal products and, you know, the cooked foods and these sorts of things. So a foundation, man, is so important because after say like, you know, we have a lot of individuals who come to us you know, with, with issues that they've had from their, from their fasts, right? They go on like a 40 day juice fast and these sorts of things, because that's what they feel that they need to do to be able to prep their body to eat raw foods. I think that's just a bunch of BS. Like our bodies are really smart. You don't need to do a 40 day juice fast to be able to eat more raw food and, you know, have that raw food benefit you. You just need to eat the raw food. So what really is hardcore is people come off of these fasts and they don't know what to do now. They don't know what to shop for in the store. They don't know how to make something that's going to be satiating and fulfilling. And a lot of times what we see is people either stay in that kind of detox and cleansing loop. And, and, and a lot of times they go back to mm. eating more calorie dense foods and going back to even eating animal products, right? going back because they're, they're malnourished. They're, they're on the verge of, you know, the body shutting down, right? You know, like your hair's falling out, you're losing your, for women, they're losing your menstruation cycle. And, you know, cause the body's smart. The body's like, Hey, we're not getting any food. Like we don't need to reproduce. Let's shut down that system. We need to put all of our energy over here. Right? So long story short, best way to transition is to find some sort of plan to follow with actual meals that you can create and learn how to make those meals. And I really feel that 30 days is not enough. Like you need 90 days to really be fluid in making the food 30, the first 30 days, you're like, ah, this is, you know, you kind of get into a groove, but it feels real weird. Say you don't know anything about raw foods and you're like, okay, I got a blender, you know, okay, I'm going to make a smoothie. Well, how do you not get bored? You have to follow some sort of a plan And then, you know, after a while you start to be like, oh man, I know how to make stuff taste amazing with, you know, dates and, you know, maybe a little bit of this and a little bit of that, you know, and, but that's, I feel like that's the, the, the best way to transition is, you know, to have something to follow and build that foundation. So that way you have something to like stand upon, right? Mm. Uh, I, I mean, I love juice and, you know, I love, you know, say, you know, the, the aspects of, you know, eliminating food, solid foods and just drinking juice, but we're not designed. I just don't feel that we're designed to sustain a high quality life by just 
doing that. So that's what's really tricky in this niche of raw veganism, right, is, you know, both Lissa and I kind of, we don't prescribe to that. We don't recommend it. What we recommend is people just eat the food, right? So that's what I would say is, you know, find something that you can follow and, you know, build that foundation. Now you know how to shop. Now you know how to make these meals and you're going to feel full. You're going to feel good. And, uh, that way, you know, yeah, you, you don't rubber band back, right? Mm. It's not like a quick fix kind of thing. And I know a lot of people, you know, we were, we're really, uh, kind of programmed in a way to, to look a certain way. This is what, you know, beautiful people look like. You got to look like this. And so people were kind of drawn to like doing a, an extended fast or, you know, eating watermelon for just a week only, you know, atrophying, basically atrophying their, their gut and their, man, I've seen, we, we work with people who have major issues for years after these cleanses because they've, they've done a real number on their, on their system. So, you know, I recommend and, and really promote following some sort of a meal plan and just making the food and eating the food, chewing it up, eating it all. <laughs> you know? mm. Yeah, absolutely. Like, like you said earlier, like it takes time to build habits. I think they reckon like 90 days to like really cement a habit. So yeah, I yeah. think I'd agree with that. And like definitely the, with the gradual transition or not a gradual transition, but more, more of a sustainable manner because we're not interested in like what you did in three months. We're interested in where you right. are in like 10 years. Like, right. Yeah. Exactly. That's yeah, so like, true. I, I want to see a show like, where are they now? You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, you get these people who are like, you know, ah, oh, you know, they're, they're promoting what they're promoting. And it's like, well, where are they now? Like, are they still, are they thriving? You know, like, are they, mm. are they doing good? Because it's really, you know, we, we as people, as humans, you know, we want, we want quick fixes. We want, uh, we love, we're, we're drawn to extremes. For sure. And, you know, eating raw food isn't, I mean, it is extreme in a lot of ways, but it's, it's, you know, it's not, uh, it's not like a, I don't know. It's, it's not something that's going to, you know, we're, we're all, we're all going to die. The body's going to, you know, eventually give out. And, you know, that's just, that's just the makeup. That's just how it is. Like, it'd be amazing. Yeah. You know, if we could, you know, start say, you know, eating the best and we have the best air and the best water from birth and maybe we could live, you know, 150 years or 180 years or something. But I mean, just like a tree, like, Everything has a life cycle, so we're not going to live forever. But what can we do to, to, to sustain, you know, a healthy life? And that's where, yeah, I feel that uh, just going back to eating the way that Mother Nature, I picture Mother Nature to, in, you know, intended for us to eat. I mean, all, we, we're one of the only species that see in the red spectrum, right? We have the thumb. We can climb trees. We're like, ooh, that's the mango I want right there, you know, the peach. So it's, it just makes so much sense to to be that way and another thing that's really fascinating is when you think about the the symbiotic relationship of things where you can't cut a, a lamb's leg off and and plant it in the ground and have it grow more lambs right but you eat a melon and you eat the seeds and you eliminate the seeds the next day more melons grow right essentially mm -hmm. you know i mean when you yeah. think about the, the, the concept and then those that melon plant is growing roots into the ground it's cleaning the soil adding so much life to the soil and then it's also giving us oxygen because it's a plant it's giving off oxygen and then when you eat those melons or you eat the greens like that what that does to our microbiome and our our inner terrain it's just man it makes so much sense that you know these are the foods that we ought to be eating on a daily basis and, you know, I, I love the idea of the, you know, I think it was Freely that coined the term raw till four. I think that's great for a lot of people, you know, have raw for breakfast mm -hmm. and lunch and maybe have like a cooked, you know, whole food, hopefully whole food plant-based, you know, meal at dinner. Something like that might be a little bit more attainable for a lot of people because it is really, it is really extreme to be like, oh, you don't eat anything cooked ever. And that's just really hard to kind of grasp that you're never going to, you know, have any cooked food. Of course, you could have whatever you want. Like people say to us like, oh, you can't eat that. And it's like, yeah, we could. We could eat whatever we want. We could eat dirt, <laughs> you know, like, dude, like, you know, we could eat whatever we want. But, you know, we choose to eat the raw foods because raw foods just you feel the best. 
And I've had some cooked foods throughout this journey of, of uh, eating raw foods for this you know, past seven, seven and a half years. You know, I've had Beyond Burgers. I've had you know, some cooked potatoes. And you know, I like to have some steamed broccoli. You know, I haven't had steamed broccoli in a while. We, so, we sold our stove. You know, we have a, a, an Instapot. But um, you know, we got the Instapot to be able to make some tempeh and to make yogurt. Um, and, you know, I don't feel that there's really anything wrong with those foods. Some people don't want to have any cooked food at all because they know their own habits. And they're, you know, kind of in fear of going back to, you know, letting all kinds mm. of stuff in. Right. So it really depends on the individual. But, yeah, man, it's it's a it's a wild ride you know being human <laughs> mm, absolutely yeah and i think i think you touched on something important there in terms of like the mental side i think oftentimes whenever we do like extreme things we people can beat themselves up like if they don't if you know if they fall off the wagon or they're not perfect and right. i think the emotional balance is so important like massive I, man yeah and you know i i say like i love to hike um and go backpacking you know and maybe you get off the trail you know, metaphorically speaking, you're off the trail, you know, you had some chips or you went out to, you know, to eat and you had some pizza or you had some animal products or whatever. Like, what do you do? Like, you just look at your device and you're like, oh, the trail's over here and you just get back on the trail, you know? So it, it doesn't have to be this thing where you beat yourself up. And, you know, of course, like, you know, the studies of, of that too, like that could be more detrimental than the actual, mm. you know, mistake or food itself, you know, just the mental aspect. Yeah. Mm, for sure definitely. yeah it's definitely it does seem like a big thing like a lot of people say like i would i would go raw but it's like oh the cravings or things like mm. that how, how how do you balance that out like mentally or physically <clears throat> like well so in a way like a craving it's it's so interesting with cravings you know because there's there's all kinds of different cravings that we may have you know but essentially a craving kind of comes because you're hungry you know or or you're thirsty you know, or, you know, you're, that's really it. So if you're eating, you're like, man, I'm really craving this, you know, say this bad food or this junk food that, you know, I, I ought to not be eating. I'm going to go ahead and eat, you know, a bunch of dates on some celery, you know, that's sweet, it's salty, it's crunchy. You feel good, you're full and that craving will go away because you just satiated yourself with something. Right. Mm. So, and it's interesting too, cause you know, some people are like, oh, I can never give up bread. I, I, you know, I love French fries, you know, well, you don't have to give those things up. Like you could eat some French fries. You could have some bread. I, I, I mean, I'm not the kind, I'm not kind of a person that, that is trying to, you know, get everybody to be raw and raw only and raw is law. Like, I just don't necessarily feel that that's really attainable for everybody, nor do is that very exciting for everybody. For me personally, it's really exciting. I love it. I love the way I feel, especially compared to like this, this, um, this year I went up to Oregon where I, you know, um, was grew up and I, I ate cooked food every day for like a good week. And I was like, man, I just, I could feel it. I'm like, man, I just, mm. you know, I was having, I was like having oatmeal for breakfast and I love oatmeal. I'm like, man, this is, you know, I like it. But then I'm like, I'm gonna have a smoothie this morning. And I'm like, man, I feel so much better with that smoothie. And just to take note is a really big thing. But yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's not, I just don't really think that it's beneficial for us to beat ourselves up or to be like, I'm never going to be able to have that again, man, have a piece of pizza. It was a couple of years ago. I did the Colorado trail with my son. We did a backpacking trip and we were in Breckenridge and there was this pizza place that had, you know, gluten-free pizza crust and they had, you know, day of cheese, which is like a vegan cheese. And I'm like, dude, I'm going to have a piece of pizza. Like that looks good. You know, I'm, it's not going to throw me from my, my goal mm. of staying, you know, a raw vegan. Right. So I had that pizza and I enjoyed every single bite of it. It was amazing. And, you know, afterwards I was like, you know, like it's, it's just kind of, you know, mushy, you know, bl the flavors are kind of bland in there a way, you know, it's just, it's not the same kind of, it doesn't hit the same as, you know, say like a, even like a raw pizza, like a raw vegan pizza, which shout out to Chris Kendall, raw advantage, man. He's got some amazing pizza recipes, mm. really, really good stuff. But yeah, that's, that's a really tricky one. That's, that stops a lot of people thinking like, oh, I won't ever be able to have that particular thing again. Have it. I say have it, man. And then really pay attention to how you feel like, hmm, that wasn't actually too bad. The part that's really tricky is, you know, 
the idea of a slippery slope. You're like, oh, I had that pizza. That actually was pretty good. I'm going to have some pizza again. And then the next thing you know, instead of 5% of the food that you're eating is, you know, processed or funk and the other 95%, you know, the healthier stuff like the raw, the raw food, that 5% grows to 10, 20, 30, 40. And then pretty soon the, the tables are turned and you're back to eating, you know, very possibly what you were eating before. So, but there, you know, I mean, maybe, you know, maybe an individual, say an individual goes that route and they go, they're like hundred percent raw vegan, you know, super, you know, really, really obsessed with like no cashews even cause cashews, even raw cashews aren't like technically raw here. Right. So it's so interesting. The little intricacies of raw veganism, and you know, fully raw is really, really tricky to. I feel like sustain for the majority of people, but say that individual is eating raw for like a month, two months, three months, and then they start to eat some, some cooked food. Maybe they go on a trip and they're like, you know what? I'm not even going to trip. I'm not going to try to stay raw. I don't have my blender. I don't have the stuff to, you know, do these things. I'm just going to eat, you know, whatever's around, you know, or maybe they're going on a trip to another country and then feel if they were to really pay attention to how they feel, very possibly, I would imagine most of the, those individuals would be like, man, I just don't feel as good as I did when I was eating raw. I kind of want to go back to eating more raw. And so I feel like in a way, sometimes those kind of hiccups or getting off the trail can be really beneficial because it gives you a good like frame of reference of what it feels like. Like when I had that Beyond Burger, man, I had a couple of them. You know, it was hand-formed patty. We were putting in like onions and stuff. It was so delicious. And I had like a bread bun, a potato bun. It was a vegan bun. It was so good. But it's not like I want to eat that all the time because, you know, I just don't, I didn't feel as good. It tasted, it was amazing right here. You know, I'm yeah. chewing like all right here. It's just dopamines. You know, I'm like, oh, this is amazing. And then you swallow it down and I'm like, oh, I kind of want another one. You know, mm. I'm like, man, this is, this is how it happens. Right. So because the beyond burgers, like it's a great transitional food, but in a way it's kind of like a science project too. It's like, that is so good. Like the oils and the salt and everything is just balanced so perfectly to where you want more. Right. And so, but I'm maybe people need to have that. Maybe people need to have you know, or give themselves permission to, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to be a high raw foodie. I, I, I like to say to friends like Nate, you know, I could never give up this or that. And I'm like, cool. Just, you know, what do you, th- do you think you could eat 70% raw? Oh yeah. I could totally eat 70% raw. All right, cool. Cool. Do you think you could eat 25% cooked whole food plant-based, like no oil, no salt? Yeah. I don't know if I could give up the oil because I use oil for my cooking or whatever. All right, cool. So what about the other 5%? Maybe that 5% could be your beer or your fries or the pizza or whatever. But like I said, a lot of times that five grows to 10, 15, 20. And pretty soon you're like, you're only eating, you know, 10% raw, you know, maybe like Mm. 20% cooked whole food plant-based. And then the other 70% is back to like, all the other funk, bagged foods, drive through and stuff. So it can be a slippery slope. Some people stay completely like my wife, Lissa. She, she will not even eat one flowerette of steamed broccoli. She's like, I know myself and I know that if I were to have that, I would just want more of it. And I'm like, that's, that's, that's cool. That's fair. You know, but I want some steamed broccoli and steamed carrots tonight with my salad. So I'm going to have some, you know, and it's not going to throw me because I know what my goal is. I know what my why is. And I think that that's a really important thing to have for people is to have a why, a good solid why. Mm. Right. hundred percent. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. hundred percent. I was going to, I was just going to agree with you there in terms of the why, like about having a goal. Cause it's great. Um, sticking to the raw foods and that, but the raw foods aren't the goal. The goal is to feel good, like throughout your day and yeah. have a life of right. purpose. So like, yeah, what's, what's your why? So obviously the raw is like a tool, but what kind of things yeah. do you enjoy doing? Right, exactly. That is, it's, it's a tool. And it's so interesting. Like there's this concept of, you know, this world being a simulation, right? Mm. The simulation theory. And that's so fascinating. I, I love, you know, I have a very open mind. I love like tapping into different, you know, theories and concepts and conspiracies and thinking about the simulation theory. 
it's so interesting that it would be written into the program that these foods would have the effect that they have on our body, right? Like that, that's, if this is a simulation that's written into the program, like these are the foods that are going to help, you know, your blood flow, you know, help you feel good, you know, less inflammation. And these foods over here are going to constrict your blood flow and promote inflammation and, you know, eventually cause your body to, you know, have issues to where you're going to need either surgeries or have to be on different medications. And yeah, so it's, it's so fascinating. But yeah, the why is so huge. And my why was, I don't want to be like I'm seeing all these individuals in the hospital beds that I'm working, working on. And I want to be like this dude, John, full mast as a dude, skiing, 86 years old. I'm like, well, shoot, I'm, what do I want? I want that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, is that, that, if that's the way, living foods, raw living foods. Another thing he said, I didn't say this too. He's like, what do you want to be? You know, and he had said, you are what you eat, right? You've ever heard that? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, so what do you want to be? And I'm like, I want to be alive, you know? So I'm like, ah, oh, right, living foods. Like you eat living foods to, be, to feel alive. Okay, that makes sense, right? So, mm. you, eat, you know, if you're eating nothing but dead food, processed food, you're going to feel <laughs> not the best, man. Mm, yeah, for sure. So, yeah, people might be curious, like, what you eat in, like, a typical day. Obviously, it mm. varies a lot. But what's, like, a general, like, um, eating structure or, like, yeah, yeah, typical meals or something? Just, just like anything, man, like it's it's boring right like going to the gym every single day it can be monotonous and it's just the the daily grind right mm -hmm. so and i don't want to say what i eat is like boring but essentially it's like fresh fruit smoothies and salads and you know so somebody might be like geez that's it that's so boring and yeah 100 percent. but like that's life life is you know, finding the, the like the the solace or whatever in the monotony and the boring things, you know, of every day. That's that's essentially it, though. We eat lots of stuff, both my wife and I, which <clears throat> I didn't say this in the story, but, you know, Lissa, Raw Food Romance, that was the plan, the meal plan that I bought, you know, in 2017. We ended up, you know, hitting it off years, you know, it was, it was, a, it was about a year later. We connected and she's my wife. Like I married the woman who wrote the book that helped change my life, man. Mm -hmm. So, but what, what we really like to do is, is make food. We love chefing it up in the kitchen. We love making all kinds of different foods. And we you know we like to try to find, you know, dishes that people really like and make it raw. And there's other raw food chefs out there that do the same thing that are really creative. And of course it might not be the exact same thing, right? Obviously, especially if there's animal products and cheeses and butters and breads, it's really hard to replicate those particular textures. And, but you can do so many amazing things with raw food, but essentially what we eat every single day is we start our morning with fresh fruit. Like this morning I had a mango and you know, that was all I had was just a big mango. And you know, after this, so probably let's see, it's like, you know, it's almost nine right now, probably have like a smoothie, make a smoothie. And we like doing like chocolate smoothies with cacao, banana smoothies. Always typically we always are putting bananas and dates in our smoothies. And that's like a good source of calories and, you know, good fiber, good vitamins and minerals. And then we'll add on that. Like whether we want like a fruit smoothie, we'll add fruit. If we want a chocolate smoothie, we'll add like maybe a little vanilla extract, a little maple syrup, some cacao powder, right? You know, we'll put some other powders in there too, like maca and stuff like that. But essentially, you know, if somebody was to ask me, like, what do you eat? Typically, like, you know, fresh fruit, fresh vegetables, smoothies and salads. Like, that's pretty much the basis of our diet. And it's been like that for, you know, 10 years for my wife. She just celebrated her 10-year raw anniversary. And for me, it'll be, you know, eight years coming up this, this February. So I'm still alive. You know, I'm not like withering away. <laughs> Got plenty of energy. You know, I'm pushing 50 and I'm feeling great, you know, but essentially that's it. But you don't have to just have those sorts of things. And that's why, you know, other recipe creators, as well as us, we focus on, you know, giving people options like making, you know, nori rolls, which is kind of like sushi, but without the fish, you know, making burgers and making tacos and making kind of like a marinara dish, kind of like a spaghetti dish, you know, pizzas and all these foods that we really love, but a raw version of it so it can be really fun 
And, you know, we don't gourmet it out and chef it up like super hardcore every single day. The typical day is essentially smoothies, salads, and banana ice cream for like a dessert. Mm. Yeah, awesome. And yeah, I think think that's important. You still have a good market as well because there's a lot of people, especially when transitioning, who need these kind of uh, replicas of old foods and old memories and because we have a lot of we have a lot of like memories stored with food don't we like oh i remember when i ate pizza with my mom like was, things like right. that like so yeah h- how have have you found like those kind of recipes have been handy for people like um yeah transitioning especially like yeah you know it's they're definitely handy they're so mm. so handy and you know our main goal essentially like being on social media and you know like lissa started you know on her path before i did like i found her right and now we're like you know we're we're one in the same and this essentially we're we're on a mission to help people eat more fruits and vegetables that's essentially it we're not trying to make raw vegans more raw vegan we're not trying to make vegans you know more vegan mm. we're just trying to get like the 97% of the population to just eat more fresh raw food so um i'm sorry what was the question again Got, yeah, um, I was just saying, like, have you found them particularly helpful when people yes. are transitioning? But the recipes, but wherever you want to yeah. take it, yeah, yeah. So what's really cool is having someone who isn't raw and isn't vegan, and then you, you know, they like you know us, or, you know, because it's kind of tricky to go up to like a complete stranger and be like, hey, try this raw wrap. Yeah. This, you know, this. That's another thing that's really changed our life is is the wraps, which we could talk about, but. What's so cool is to see individuals' reactions that aren't raw or aren't vegan eat raw food. They're like, man, this is good, right? And if that's like the best compliment, you know, as someone who prepares the food. So I'm like, you know, I'll ask, like, do you think you could see yourself eating something like that, like every day, you know, maybe once a day or whatever, you know, and, and you know, like you're saying, you know, we have these memories, we have a lot of like, interlocked habits and things that can be hard to kind of let go and release. So it can be a lot for someone right off the get go. Do you think you could just eat raw and raw only? But it's like, do you think you could eat something like that every day, you know, for a meal? Oh yeah, definitely. Right. So it's like, all right, cool. Well, you know, there you go. Right. So you are planting these seeds and yeah, I think that having, you know, something like that, you know, a good meal, like, you know, have a taco, a burger or a wrap, these sorts of like foods that are a little bit more fun than a salad because a salad salads get bad raps right in movies and in shows and stuff like oh you're eating a salad you know you're made fun of because you're eating a salad or you know everybody knows they should be eating a salad but it's interesting what kind of like a bad rap they can get so these other foods these other recipes these other meals can really yeah they can really change you know the way that people view what raw food really is right because a lot of times people think if you're a raw foodie, you know, you're eating like what they, they're like, what do you eat? They don't even, you know what I mean? And it's so interesting. It's like, wow, like just pause for a moment before you ask, what do you eat? And just think like how many raw foods in your life do you eat? Right. But they're like, well, yeah, I just, I, I eat apples and bananas. Is that all you eat? Right. So that's where these, these recipes and these other kinds of meals, you know, combining a bunch of raw foods to make it, you know, delicious and you hold it differently is it can be a lot of fun you know we've had people who um who aren't vegan who are like asking you know like when are you guys gonna do you guys need to come back like we want you know we want to want to have the tacos again right so it's it's really it's it's so so fun and so important to have different things that you make and learning different things and that's where that meal plan comes in handy is because then the individual is able to make this food themselves and they're putting like the energy there's so much more energy like our own energy that we're putting into creating a meal when you're cu- cutting up things and you're okay i got to dehydrate this for a little bit you know i'm going to make this over here the energy that you're putting into your food is so much different than just getting a paper bag out of the drive through window. There's no like connection there really, you know? Mm. So, but yeah, definitely, man, I feel that, you know, having, having these recipes and these different food, you know, these different foods can really help other people who don't eat a lot of raw food or eat any raw food see like, wow, 
that's raw food. That's what raw food is. Jeez, this is this is good. <laughs> you know? Yeah. 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 And have you got any tips for like people who kind of want to make it work, but like they're like, oh, I'm busy. I work a nine to five. Maybe I'm on a mm-hmm. little bit of a budget. Like, um, sure. yeah. Anything you found working with people or seeing mm-hmm. people or just time saving tips yourself? Budget. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, for, for budget wise, like, yeah, if, you're, if you, yeah, yeah, if you're only eating raw food, right, it can be, not, it's the going to the grocery store is super fast and it, it doesn't have to be very expensive, right? especially if you're not trying to have every single thing organic. Um, cause if you're buying only organic, like that can be a bit pricey, but if you're not buying anything else, let's say you're like, I'm going to do raw for 30 days and just try it out. You'll find that it's not that expensive. It's actually, you know, if it's, it's, it could be comparable, if not less expensive when you're not buying all the other fluff, you know, breads mm-hmm. and crackers and, you know, canned goods and all these things to stock your cupboards with. Right. Mm-hmm. So, and then, you know, of course, the first and foremost thing is the why. Like, if you've got a strong why, man, we as humans can do really anything. Like, we're amazing creatures. So, but time, when it comes down to the time, we're actually going to do a, a class here coming soon, like a full day meal prep. Because really what you do is you get up in the morning, you make your smoothie, right? You pack your bag full of some fresh fruit, some grapes, some apples, some bananas, some of these hard fruits that, you know, can kind of maybe, you know, get banged around in your lunchbox or whatever for snacks. And you make up like you just prep it all up in the morning, you know, make up two dressings, right? So you've got your lunch dressing and then you've got your dinner dressing for when you come home. You don't have to make a dressing and you chop all of your stuff right then. Let's say you're going to have two salads today, a smoothie and two salads. Well, just imagine if how you'd feel if you had a smoothie and two salads. Now, of course, people are like, oh, I need my protein and, you know, I got to have, a, you know, this and that. Like, I'm, I'm not going to feel full. Well, if you have a salad like we have, which definitely would take time to kind of build up to because this is a lot of fiber. Like the average, you know, individual is getting like, it was something ridiculous, like 15 grams of fiber at most a day, right? Wow. And we're eating like up towards like, you know, 80 to like 100 grams of fiber, you know? Mm, so same head, yeah. when you're not, yeah, when you're not used to that much fiber, you know, you're going to be eliminating more often, you know, which some people will be like, I don't want to do raw food because, you know, I don't have time to go to the bathroom that many times. But it's not like you're in there like trying to get nah. it out, you know, like it's just nice and easy, right? So, but that's when I was working a nine to five, that's what I would do. I would, I would actually bring my Vitamix with me to the hospital because I was like, I need my Vitamix. I want banana ice cream around three o'clock when you're like feeling that crash, you know, you need a little like pick me up something sweet. I would, you know, keep frozen fruit in the, the fridge in our, in our lunchroom. And I would just make the dressing when I had my Vitamix, I would make the dressing fresh at work. Um, so essentially that's it. It's just, it's about thinking just kind of like if you're going to do a workout, you're like, okay, this is going to be my, my moves for today. You go through in your head and you envision like how the workout's going to go. You're like, all right, cool. It's going to take me like 45 minutes. That's what I'm doing. So it's the same thing. You're like, okay, what do I need today? I'm going to need, you know, I need my breakfast. I'll, you know, make my breakfast. I'm going to make up my, my dressing. I would just make the dressing fresh at work and I would chop um, the cucumber and the tomato fresh at work, but I would pre chop my lettuce and I'd have cabbage and, you know, some shredded carrots, all that stuff can kind of be in the same container and not get messed with, but cucumbers and tomatoes are all about waterier. So that's going to get your salad all funky. So I would cut those fresh at work and I would have my salad, like a nice big bowl of salad with, you know, maybe like anywhere from five to, you know, eight different vegetable ingredients in the salad and then a really delicious dressing before my coworkers would get back from the cafeteria or going across the street to like the, the, the food truck, I would have my meal ready to go already. Now, of course, you know, when you get into the protein, you know, kind of scare, like, you know, there's this big thing like, Oh, you gotta have enough protein. And you know, where are you going to get your protein? Like, you know, that, that can really play into people's, you know, uh, psyche as well. Like I can't do this, man. I got to have my protein. I'm not going to have enough protein. You're just eating lettuce. You're not getting any protein. Like protein is it's in everything. Like you're, you know, you're, you're going to be fine. You know, you can build muscle on protein. Cause if you push and get the muscle, you know, like under stress, the muscle's going to grow because it has no choice. Right. So 
Um, and then there's other things you can, you know, be doing like sprouts are amazing, you know, having more sprouts, having more microgreens. Sprouts are really fascinating, though, like how fast they are to grow, you know, mung beans and lentils, these sorts of things. You can just soak them overnight, bring them the next day, toss them in your salad. You know, they're definitely a little bit different texture than if they were cooked, like a cooked lentil as opposed to a raw sprouted lentil. It's a more fibrous. But um, that's what that's what I do, man. It's just, you know, if you make up you know, you don't, you, you could just chop up all your, your lunch and chop up your dinner. The, the ingredients you have, say you've got, you know, a couple different lettuces, you know, some of the harder vegetables, you know, the root vegetables, like the carrots, the beets, um, you know, cabbages, those sorts of things. Then you just toss it in you know, your Tupperware or like a Ziploc bag, bring that to you with work to work, you know, bring your bowl I you know, like when I was working in the hospital, man, I had a, I had a duffel bag. I'd bring my Vitamix, my bowl, my cutting board, certain seasonings. I'd always have lemons and dates and garlic with me so I could make like a really bomb dressing super quick. And there was, so there was just, I, I was setting myself up for, for staying on point because the systems aren't set up for us to, to do these sorts of things. But I had that strong why, right? But that's what I would do. Like, you know, just stick with that prep it up in the morning. And then when you get home in the fridge, you already chopped your stuff for the morning. So you literally just toss it in a bowl, cut up some more tomatoes, some more cucumber, maybe you'll, you know, want some hot peppers and you already made your dressing. So you just pour the dressing on. You don't have to be like, Oh, what am I going to make for dinner tonight? You already did it this morning. So it takes about an hour in the morning to do your smoothie, your breakfast and your dinner. And it's done. So that's, that's, you know, one of the suggestions that I would give, which of course, you know, we need to do more of these classes to kind of show people like how, cause you know, we're, a lot of us are visual learners. And when you see how easy it is, you're like, oh my gosh, mm. like that's it. And you know, imagine how good you'd feel if you ate just like that for like five days, you know, a smoothie and two salads a day, you know, with fresh fruit or like celery, taking a stick of celery and putting, you know, like pitting your dates and putting some dates on celery. That's a killer snack you know eat three sticks of that like you're feeling pretty dang good so and you know drinking drinking more water Mm. these sorts of things but yeah that would be my suggestion you know and the budget thing like you know people will say like oh how do you afford it like that's a rich person's diet and it's like no we don't buy anything else though like there's nothing else that we're buying no restaurants no yeah no 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 rest we can't go to a restaurant like there's no restaurants man like And, you know, some people, you know, would be like, oh, I can't do raw vegan because I want to be able to go out to eat. Well, then, you know, do raw till four thing and, you know, give yourself the restaurant. Like, don't it's not all or nothing kind of thing. You know, like we are weird. We're crazy. Like we just want to eat raw food. So that's where we roll. Like we make it on our tailgate. We make we make a salad in the fucking parking lot of the grocery store, man, because it's like, where can you go to get it? You can't go to Chipotle and get a salad. You go to Subway, you know, oil dressing like. We might as well just make it on our tailgate of our truck or like on the trunk of our car. You know, like you could make a bomb salad for like four or five dollars. Killer salad. You're not going to be able to buy a salad that delicious with mango, fresh mango, some shallot, you know, or like uh, green onions, you know, avocado, you know, a couple different lettuces. And it's fast, man. It's so fast, mm. especially when you've done it several times. You're like, this is easy. Mm. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. But that would. That would, you know, that would be like, so, you know, sorry for all these long, super long winded answers, man. But, you know, yeah, that's, uh, that, that's really it. It's not very expensive and it's so fast, man. It is so fast. Like, like I said, I, I was making my delicious salad, you know, before people were even back from the cafeteria, you know? Yeah, no, it's all good. The people want to hear from you. I don't, I don't like to, um, you know, steal the floor. I like to let let people talk um but yeah i I agree like where there's a will there's a way like if you want to make it work you know your why like you'll you'll make it work and yeah yeah, it's it's the same here with restaurants i don't miss them at all like i think when you engage at like a deeper level you connect with people at a deeper level it's it's about more than the food it's not Mm. the food is just it's just like a passing of time but yeah yeah. Yeah. how have you how have you found it socially personally the lifestyle yeah you know to touch upon the restaurant thing for just a sec I mean, there's, there's definitely something really amazing about a restaurant, right? The establishment's cool, the good lighting, you know, you go sit down, you like get the menu out, like you're being served, bro. I want to be served, man. Mm. And there's not a lot of places like another raw food place that we like to go to in Oregon shut down. There's no raw places here in Vegas, right? There's lots of vegan options, which is 
great. It's so good to see so many places, you know, embracing like more vegan options for people. But raw options, man, there's just like not very many. L.A. is the closest place that we could go. Like Alok is pretty much the only restaurant that we would go to. There's a place called Wild Living Foods, too, down in L.A. Um, but Alok, you know, they've been around for, you know, 20 years or more. They they have some amazing meals. Um, but you know, that's, that's something that I really do miss, man. Like I miss going, we have a place here called true food. It's in the Caesar's palace and they have some raw options and they know when we come in and they're like, Hey, you know, call the chef. Cause this is another thing. <clears throat> say you want to go to a restaurant and you're like, I'm trying to stay on my raw diet. You can call up the restaurant and be like, Hey, can I talk to the head chef or who's the chef in charge? You know, like I have a, I have diet preferences where, you know, I'm raw, you know, I'd love to come in. I want to spend some money in your restaurant, but I, I want, I want something raw and I want it to be oil free. You know, like some of these chefs, man, they've been excited. They'll come out to the table to see us and they'll be like, how do you like it? And you know, people are looking at us like, who are these famous people that the chef's yeah. coming out to talk to? Right. <laughs> but you know, they're having fun. It's something out of the ordinary for them. And it's like, it's it's helping them you know express some of their creativity as a chef so restaurants are amazing uh, you know just for that fact being served and then as far as socially goes man like you know it's so interesting because i feel like just really people just we all want to just chew together right if if other people can kind of get past like i don't sit there and judge and like oh my gosh this guy's eating bread over here and he has a steak on his plate like oh i don't even i i can't even believe i'm associating with these people like you know if there are people that i've you know maybe just met or enjoy being around because we have something else in common like you know snowboarding or mountain biking or something man, i don't really care you know i'm not i'm not there to try to convert people i'm not gonna i don't really like to spend my life trying to convert people and trying to get people to put my glasses on you know if they're open and they're asking questions then boom i'm like brah, you know <laughs> but it's uh i feel that that's it man we just want to chew together as people we just want to sit around and chew together right so socially it doesn't have to be this thing where you know you you stop hanging out with the people that you love you know, and, and, and changing your diet is like, it's easier to change your religion, I feel like, than it is your diet, right? In so many ways, man, it's, it's, it's really, diet is a real tricky thing. And it, it, you can, if you're eating raw around other people who aren't eating raw, it's almost like you're holding a mirror, right? Like they're yeah. look, they're, you know, they're like, oh shoot, man. I, Cause it's so interesting. Cause I feel like as humans, we all know that we ought to, to be eating more fruits and vegetables. Like, you know, when, you know, there, you're not doing anything by eating your salad or having, you know, some sort of a raw meal in front of them, aside from just reminding them that they're not eating, you know, like a healthier choice, but socially can be kind of tricky. If your whole thing is like, I can't hang out with anybody who's not vegan. I can't hang out with anybody who isn't eating raw. Um, you know, you, you know, and, and sometimes that maybe need, you know, that, that needs to be a part, uh, you know, as well. Maybe there's people who don't serve you <clears throat> and are trying to mm. kind of, it's the whole crab in a barrel kind of thing, you know, like, you know, you're trying to crawl out of the barrel and they're like grabbing you and pulling you back in. So if you got people like that in your life, you know, you know, maybe it is kind of best to like evaluate who you're hanging out with and, you know, maybe, you know, you only do certain things together or you say like, Hey, you know, we shouldn't, we should, I don't want to, you know, talk about this, you know, if you get worked up or they get worked up. Um, and sometimes, you know, like just like a tree, sometimes friendships have a, a cycle of life as well, you know, but if the friendship's tight, man, and like, you know, you have, you know, you're, you're on a different mission you know, very possibly you, you might be able to inspire them to be like, you know what, shoot, you're making sense. Or like they're watching you over the next, you know, several months or a year. And they're like, man, look at like, wow, you look good. You, I can see just your energy, your aura is just different. Like maybe I should kind of, you know, what are you doing? They're going to be asking you questions and stuff too. Right. So, but socially in a way, you know, it, it especially when you're transitioning and you're just becoming someone who is a vegan you know, and you go through different, I feel like everybody can kind of go through different stages. You know, there was stages where I was like really pissed off. I was really angry. You know, I was just like, 
you know, you see, you're seeing through this lens and you're like, why can't other people see it like this? Like we're fucking it up out there, man. Like this is, this is ridiculous, but you know, it, it, it's just, it is what it is, man. And we're not going to, I love the idea of, you know, flipping the tables to where like maybe only three or 5% of the population is eating animals. That's what I feel like, you know, we're not going to see that. <laughs> like, you know, I, I mean, I love the idea like, oh yeah, no, don't, don't speak like that. Nate, like that's negative. Have people say, and I'm like, no, but for real though, like 150 years from now, like <laughs> there's still going to be people, man, who, who want to kill and, you know, like eat you know, the flesh of another being. That's just how it's going to be like, but it's, uh, you know, you just have to evaluate who you're hanging out with and, and, you know, how, how, who you want to associate with. And if they're bringing you down or making you feel shitty about what you're doing, then, you know, maybe it's time that, you know, you let that one go kind of thing. Mm. Yeah, exactly. If it's people worth like spending time with like family or like close friends, like for me personally, I just, um, I'll eat my fruit before and then I'll just get like a small salad when I'm out. And yeah, now they're used to it at the start. There's a little bit of like resistance. They're like, oh, what's right. going on there? But yeah, yeah. I, I think they're like, worried about you. Yeah, like, exactly. You, it's concerned. You're going to, yeah. you're going to die. Dylan, yeah. come on, yeah. you're eating a salad. Like you need some bread, you know, <laughs> or you need yeah. some of this or that. hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Like, and I think like you said, the life cycle, like, especially I found at the start of the journey, I really wanted to convert everyone and I really wanted to like, you know, sing from the heavens, like how, how yeah. beneficial it is. But right. yeah, you have to let people, you know, yeah. lead their own path. You can lead the horse it's, to water. That's right. You can lead the horse to water, man. That is, that is one of the greatest sayings, you know, and you know, it's, it's really nice when they're open and they're asking you questions, right? Cause mm. other than that, then it's like unsolicited advice and you know, nobody likes that. But, uh, yeah, man, it's, it's interesting. Cause you know, we, it, it it's, it's just a trip to picture like how far we've, you know, been separated from what, what's just real and natural. Like it's so funny, you know, having, you know, the lens on that we have, it's like, this is, this is the food, man. This is like what we're supposed to be eating. Like it grows, like, you know, most people who grow a garden, they're like, come take tomatoes, take zucchinis. We have too many. Like it grows so much plentiful. Like we don't have to cut forests down and mm -hmm. grow grains to feed. It's just so interesting. There's a lot of money to be made in so many different ways with how this this world and this realm is set up, mm. right? And it's, it's, it's in a lot of ways, it's, it's about that. It's about profit. And there's a lot of profit to be made on keeping those hospital beds full and keeping those pills, you know, being pumped. And mm. it's, uh, yeah. So you, you, you know, that's where it comes down to just making the choice, you know, what do I want for me, for my person? And, you know, sometimes it can be really tricky with family. Sometimes, there's separation there. There's been a lot of separation just within the change of the world, you know, the, the turn of the world events that we had, you know, a few years back, right? Like mm. look at the separation <laughs> and the division that has happened over, you know, which political party or what you believe and diet's no different. And so, you know, that, that can be kind of tricky, but, uh, education, furthering your education is really, really key. So that way you have some you know, a way to kind of connect with people and let them see through your lens if they're really curious. Some people just may want to, you know, kill you because you're reflecting on them or, you know, like there's, you know, there's, there's angry people on the other side of, of, of things too, who are, you know, always going to work against us in, you know, what our mission is, you know, cause mm. that's just, that's just a thing that, that, that goes on too. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. It's not very profitable telling people to just eat fruit and veg <laughs> compared to like take this right. protein powder supplement, right. et cetera. Dude, yeah, so it's... much. Yeah. And even, you know, in the vegan, you know, realm of things, you know, like it's a lot of vegans who are, you know, like, ah, you got to get this much protein. You know, there's a lot of vegan mm. protein powders, which is great. You know, I mean, these companies want to make money, man. They're going to do, they're going to, they're going to try to produce what the people are voting for with their dollar. And that's why we see like, look at all these different plant milks that are out there now. Your oat milk, hemp milk, cashew milk, almond milk, coconut milk, you know, like all these okay. amazing products because 
people are demanding. Like, I want a plant-based version. So the companies are like, well, you know, this is what people want. This is what's going to make money. Let's try to figure out how to make a plant-based hot dog, you know, or whatever it may be, right? So, yeah. Mm. But it's uh, <clears throat> raw foods, man. You know, raw foods aren't the end-all, be-all, heal-all either. Like, you know, there's, you know, people will come to the raw food <clears throat> movement or world or niche or whatever you want to say. And all those words kind of like cringe me out sometimes because you hear them so much or the word journey, you know, it's like, oh, I'm on my journey. But it's so <laughs> true. Like we're on our own trail, man. We're on our own journey. My evolutionary journey of the soul is is different for other people. And some people came here to just get fucked up and just eat trash and just like experience like, you know, there's people who want to just... If, if there's nothing but infinite oneness, then the one infinite all that ever was, all that ever will be, wants to know what it's like to be mm. everything. So it's, you know, to, to, but, you know, as an individual, what do you want as an individual with this particular vehicle? And there's certain laws that take place in this world, in this dimension. There's a cause and effect, right? And we see that when well, we see that when we walk to the store. You know, I haven't been to the UK, but I would imagine it's probably pretty similar to the States in a lot of ways. Mm. And, you know, you're walking around, you're like, geez, like, look at us. We're plumping up, man. And like, you know, <laughs> a lot of people are on medications and, you know, a lot of people have blood flow issues and all kinds of issues. And a lot of it stems from, like, I would say 97% of the issues are stemming from what we're putting in our mouths every day. Mm. 100% man yeah I'm just getting conscious yeah. of the time and I want to let you have your smoothie in a minute um, but if you've got time for a few rapid fire questions that would be sure man that'd be yeah, awesome yeah let's do it cool. rapid fire okay here we go yeah okay so what's your favourite fruit mm, mango nice describe yourself in one word mm. ah man that's a tricky one describe myself in one word you can take as long as you need <laughs> um I don't know, crazy. <laughs> <laughs> um, gosh, yeah, I don't know, man. That's that's a tricky one. I need to, I need to, to think about that. That's a that's a good question. Hmm. You're gonna go word. with crazy? Yeah, I mean, to the to the majority of the individuals out there looking in, I'm I'm crazy. <laughs> uh, but for me, to, if I were to describe myself, um, I would say compassionate you know mm. yeah nice what's one book that everyone needs to read mm. um the war of art mm. is that by Stephen, Stephen Pressfield? Pressfield? yeah yeah, yeah good book. Uh, that's a good one what's the best piece of advice that you've ever received hmm I guess it would probably be like that dude John saying on that ski lift, what do you want to be? How do you want to feel? Right? If you are what you eat. Um, that was a good piece of advice. You know, and of course, it's something that we hear all the time. Yeah, that, that's a good one. That's one that's mm. coming to my head. Yeah, I like that. What are three things that you can't live without? Hmm. <clears throat> three things that I can't live without. If it was, you know, say for food, it would be dates, bananas, and greens. <laughs> uh, yeah, those are the three things that I couldn't, I couldn't live without. Mm -hmm. Well, I probably could, but it, you know, those are really staples in our in our house. Awesome. What's your greatest strength and what's your biggest weakness? Mm, greatest strength would be. Um, Being empathetic, I guess, you know, like, yeah, empathy, um, weakness, um, inconsistency. Mm. And what do you think is the cause of the inconsistency? Just, just, are you like quite a flowy person? Like you just go with the flow? Like, yeah, flowy. Um, and when I say consistency, like I think of like, oh, you know, my gym routine, like, oh, you okay. know, why can't, why can't I stay like on point with just like my diet 
with going to the gym, you know, like, so that's why I say inconsistency, same with posting, you know, I, I go through spurts with posting, mm. posting really good, doing stuff. And then, then I'm just like, ah, you know, kind of fall back and, you know, kind of just do my thing. But, uh, those are things that I'm striving to, to get better at, stay more consistent, putting the message out, you know, sharing what I have to share. Um, yeah. And of course, you know, working on my body, the actual physical aspect of my body. Mm hmm. Yeah, well, you set up, you set the intention in the universe now, so you never know, might yeah, deliver. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> That's so true. Do you believe in having a purpose? If so, what's your purpose in life? Mm. Yeah, I think that purpose is such a huge one, and and I think that everybody, everybody has a purpose. And you know, I definitely believe that I have a purpose. And there's been several times in my life I'm like, what the hell is my purpose? And I'd like to envision and you know of course like affirmations are so huge and we can be programmed with you know negative affirmations and negative self-talk which can be really tricky but i would like my purpose to be impact yeah you know impact in people's lives and what with whatever it is that i can share with them you know stuff that i'm into mm. awesome finally what are you grateful for today well i'm grateful for this podcast or this this interview um, I'm grateful that I woke up and I've got my right mind. I can see, I can, uh, you know, move, you know, um, I'm grateful for my wife. I'm grateful for my life. Uh, the life that we live, the, I'm grateful for all of the, the people that, that help us live this life and tune into our content and content and, 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 and support us. Um, yeah, I'm grateful for my kids and i'm grateful for the seasons mm, amazing so yeah where can people find you if they want to reach out get in touch see what you got going on yeah so um i could be found on all the social media platforms not maybe all of them but uh raw natty nate that's r-a-w-n-a-t-t-y-n number eight um i used to blow glass you know, I had my own glass blowing company for about 15 years and I used to sign my pieces with an N and a number eight. It was a little quicker. And then when you sound it out, you know, it's Nate. Mm -hmm. So raw natty Nate on all the platforms, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, um, Twitter, which I don't do anything on Twitter. I've like made a couple tweets. I don't think it's called Twitter anymore. It's X now. Uh, Snapchat. Yeah. yeah. And now school. And the community. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to tell the people yeah. a bit about your community? Because I'll take yes. a look. It looks yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, sure, man. So I just launched this community. It's called Full Mast Empire. And now you know the story. And really the, the main focus, you know, I'm, I'm working on building stuff up in there. I do have my microgreens course, uh, Sprouts, Crouts, and Microgreens in there. Uh, this is on the school platform. Um, we also have like a, a live lunch where we made lunch with, with our, our people for 21 days straight live on zoom and we recorded that. So that's in there. Um, I've got my raw vegan kitchen essentials course in there. And essentially what this group is going to be focused on is blood flow for men. Like, you know, women have blood flow too, but I want to have a men's group, um, and in, and focus on, on, uh, yeah, blood flow and, you know, live in a life, a full mast lifestyle. So full mast empire on school. Um, and right now I've got the founding members price at $27 a month. Uh, you know, that will be increasing here, you know, probably uh, maybe this next month, I'll probably leave it for a month. Cause like I said, I'm still building out a lot of different modules in there and I want to have a, a good amount of information and, and good amount of, uh, you know, protocols and such, you know, for people to follow, but I've got recipes. We'll be putting recipes in there regularly. We'll be doing classes regularly. Um, you know, and just connecting, doing, you know, doing guy stuff, talking about guy stuff, you know, there's all kinds of really cool things that we do as men. We want to have, we want, we love to solve problems and, Sometimes it's important for us to have a group where we can feel comfortable and safe to to talk about certain things where there's no women in the group. So this is a kind of a pivot for me in a lot of ways because you know really I've been focusing on just recipes and these sorts of things. So but yeah, full mast empire on school just launched. Super pumped about it, and uh, we'll be putting a lot of focus in there. And uh, yeah, you know, hopefully overcoming some of the consistency issues that you know I may have had tendencies with in the past to be in there regularly and connecting with people and, you know, I'm open book. So, you know, if anyone's listening to this, you know, feel free to message me if you've got questions, you know, if there's any way that I can help in, you know, any of these areas, you know, I'm all about it, man. I want to, I want to help people. 
Awesome. Yeah, sounds great. I think that's a very, very useful um, market you're serving and, and, and helping people in that way. I think it's it's quite a rising problem and I think it's really important. Oh, so yeah, bro. I'll put all yeah, the links so in the description. One of the statistics is from 1995, like we had 152 million men who suffer from impotence, ED, you know, mm -hmm. not eating disorders, but erectile dysfunction. And now it's at like 322 million. Wow. Men. And these are people who, you know, there's, there's probably so many other people who haven't even come forward with the yeah, problem, yeah. Or, you know, so they're not even in this. So that's the entire population of the United States, you know, in men worldwide. So massive, massive problem. Like, oh my gosh. And, you know, this is a problem that, you know, isn't this not being talked about necessarily like I don't ever really see but you know with my story in the full mast like that's where I'm like I need to focus there like you know we need to get guys like because you know this plays into how we feel as men our confidence you know our our just it just plays into effect in so many different ways relationships too you know these sorts of things you know I've got women friends and they're like Nate what's up with the guys and they're you know they're they're limp dicks and I'm like their blood flow is just off you know like it's you know, it's not that, you know, poor guy, you know, like he probably feels horrible, you know, like, but so the, yeah, it's definitely something that I really want to focus on and go, you know, just, yeah, just be kind of like the main area of focus in so many ways is, you know, helping, helping guys live a, a full masked lifestyle, man. Mm, yeah. Awesome. I think it's great. And yeah, I'll put all the links in the description and yeah, I appreciate your time. Thanks for the conversation. Thanks for everyone. Absolutely. Everyone who's listened and watched, especially if you made it this far and yeah. Wishing everyone a wonderful day. Peace and love, everyone.